Uh, first thing, uh, what brings you to the Munich Security Conference this year? Well, John, the Munich Security Conference is the uh, benchmark for security conferences in Europe. You have so many senior leaders and uh, people who are genuinely, genuinely committed to security, uh, not just in Europe, but around the world. So that's a that's the primary reason I like to come is who all else is here and the, it's very substantive. And this one is the best one I've been to yet. Okay. Um, now, with 2015, we saw a lot of exercise at Trident Juncture. Um, you know, Atlantic Resolve. What, what were the big uh, impact points from you, sir? Well, 2015 was a, a great year for the alliance. Actually, NATO, the most successful alliance in the history of the world, um, in just a few months from the, the NATO summit at Wales in September 14 uh, through 2015, uh, significant improvements in responsiveness, um, commitment of allies to uh, enhance training, and then for the U.S. Army, the uh, arrival of uh, heavy forces, rotational heavy forces, uh, rotational aviation, uh, significant increase in uh, the quality as well as the quantity of National Guard and U.S. Army Reserve participation, uh, really um, great effects from the whole Army to do our share for assurance to allies and deterrence against a revanchist Russia. Uh, but also, uh, we have improved our uh, force protection, if you will, for our, our facilities. You know, over half of our families live outside of concerns uh, or bases. So uh, having good transparency with our host nation uh, security services, uh, men and women and families uh, doing all the proper things so that we can keep having families here so we can keep training and operating. I actually am very pleased with the uh, progress that we made in that. And uh, what plans do you have for 2016? So 2016 we're going to continue. Uh, you know we have 30,000 soldiers uh, assigned to uh, U.S. Army Europe uh, and our mission is to uh, deter Russia, assure allies, protect American interests. When I was a lieutenant we had 300,000 soldiers in Europe and our mission was to deter the Soviet Union, assure allies, and protect American and interest. So our task now is to make 30,000 look and feel like 300,000. And we do that with uh, putting more responsibility on junior leaders, young officers, NCOs. Uh, we rely very much on the National Guard, Army Reserve to give us additional capabilities. Uh, we work even more closely with our allies. We use German bridges and British bridges, for example, uh, allied short-range air defense. And uh, of course, we have allied officers that work in U.S. Army Europe headquarters. Uh, the rotation force now is essential for what we do but that's how we get heavy forces and enough aviation over here so 2016 is going to be more of that uh, some great exercises uh, helping us improve our capabilities and interoperability and um, with the ERI we're going to see the 3.4 billion dollars coming in uh, how will that change user well ERI uh, European reassurance initiative uh, is a manifestation of the commitment of the United States to Europe the recognition by the president and the Congress that uh, our strategic interests are very important and strong here in Europe. You know, the old saying, follow the money. So for the Army in Europe, this will give us uh, increased rotational presence. Beginning in 17, uh, 2017, we'll be able to have heel to toe uh, longer rotations by rotational forces coming from the states of a heavy brigade combat team. It will also give us the, uh, uh, the ability to put some heavy equipment for another brigade, a fires brigade, and a division headquarters into Army preposition stocks somewhere back in Europe. So that's important for contingencies. Uh, I believe it will also give us uh, even more access to the National Guard and Reserve, which is essential for us to do our mission. And then finally, uh, it'll help me, uh, I believe, get my number one shortfall addressed, which is Army aviation. Uh, Army aviators, best aviators in the world. I need combat aviation brigade uh, back in Europe, probably rotational, but uh, you need Apaches and lift, U.S. Army lift, to really have a deterrent capability. And last question I have for you, sir. Um, you know, some of the terrorist attacks that we've seen that have hit Europe within the past year, uh, what message would you have for soldiers or service members currently serving in Europe? Well, first of all, a brand new soldier uh, or someone just arriving in Europe 
Europe. Uh, it's an exciting place to be. Uh, we've got a real mission in front of us. Uh, plus, Europe's a great place to serve and live. Uh, bring your family. We've got a very good education system here, very good health care here. Um, uh, I am very comfortable with the security posture that we have. Uh, we, we have families putting kids on school buses that move across town to go to a school in another concern. I mean, this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow that if I wasn't completely confident in the security situation. Um, and if you are a junior leader, this is the best leadership lab in the Army because you're going to have so much responsibility. Um, it's normal that the senior Army commander in one of our allied countries is a captain, a company battery troop commander. He or her, she, with their first sergeant, that's the face of the U.S. Army in many of our allied countries.